she's got all the brain behind it, and she's, uh, she's what makes it all look really good. So thank you, Faith, for dreaming that up and for God moving through you and letting him move through you. You guys good this morning? Wow, man, I am messed up. I am messed up this morning. He is so good. I'm so grateful to be here in the house of the Lord. How many of you got the opportunity to pray and fast this week? Come on, come on. So good. I want you, thank you guys. Just thank you for praying and fasting. I want you to know there's so much power behind the corporate prayer and fast. I know sometimes it's tough. Some of you might have fasted chocolate. Some of you might have fasted the internet. I don't know what you fasted. I fasted food this week. And, uh, but man, God moved through that. And he's going to move. And I know when it's a corporate fast like that, when we call a fast, it makes it a little tougher because you're doing it kind of in yourself. And you're trying to tell God, I want this to happen. You're building that bank up, that fast bank that when you can insert that. When Jesus says some things don't come but by prayer and fasting, you can build that bank up and you can insert that. Tonight, I believe we're going to insert all of our fasting into the water tonight. And watch what God is going to do tonight. He's going to heal people. He's going to touch people in ways that you've never seen them touched before. Lives are going to be changed tonight. Hearts are going to be won in the water. Minds are going to be restored in the water tonight. I believe it with everything in me tonight. God is moving. He's moving. He's moving. And he's here today. So thank you for fasting and praying. We're going to talk today about how God hears your prayer. He hears your cry. He loves you so much. Does God ever wake you guys up in the morning? <laughs> He's doing it quite often on not just one time, but two or three times in the morning waking me up. And, and, uh, and this morning it was, it was interesting because he woke me up and, and I woke Shelly up to tell her what he was telling me when he woke me up. And I didn't know if she was getting it, but I was like, I woke her up and I said, do you know how powerful God is? Because he woke me up and told me how powerful he was. And, she, and I said, do you know how powerful God is? And she kind of, oh, okay. Oh. And I said, no, really, do you know how powerful he is? Do you know that God said with a word, let there be light, and there was light? There was no source other than him. Because three days, four days later, he made the sun and the moon the stars. And that's what we see now. The source of the light, the, the sun and the moon the stars. They give us light. The light of the day and light of the night. But before that, there was day and night, day and night, day and night for the first three days. Because he is the source of our light. He is the source of our prayers. He's the source of everything that we need. He is the source. I love that. And I said, he's powerful. I said, do you know how powerful he is? How powerful is he? God's like, do you know how powerful I am? How powerful are you? I can take a chunk of dirt and I can throw it down and make a man. Come on. That's a powerful God. He said, I can take my seed and place it into a woman and create a savior that takes the sin from the world. That's how powerful I am. So I told my wife, I said, do you know how powerful God is? Yeah, I know. I asked her a little bit ago. I said, do you remember me waking you up? And she barely remembers me waking her up. If you have your Bibles, turn to Daniel. Chapter 10, verse 12. I'm going to read verse, verse 12 is what's going to stand out, but I'm going to read a little bit more than that. Hallelujah. We'll start at verse 9. Daniel said, and I heard a voice. And at the sound of it, I fainted, and I fell flat to the ground, face to the dirt. A hand touched me and pulled me to my hands and knees. Daniel, he said, I love this. This is the message translation. Daniel, he said, man of quality. Don't you want to be a man and woman of quality? Listen carefully to this message. And get up to your feet and stand to attention. I've been sent to bring you news. Do you know when you pray, after you're done praying, God wants you to stand on the promise that he has for you. Stand on the prayer. Don't waver. Don't move from it. Don't let the enemy change your heart toward that prayer that you have for him. And he said this, 
and get up on your feet and stand at attention. Anybody ever been in the military? You stand at attention. You stand there until they say, at ease. Get up to your feet and stand at attention. I have been sent to bring you news. And when he said this, Daniel stood up and he was shaking. Why? Because there was authority in the room. There was authority in the place. Daniel stood and he was shaken. And this is when he said, relax, at ease. Verse 12. Don't be afraid. For the moment, listen, I want you to hear this carefully. For the moment that you decided to humble yourself, from the moment that you decided to humble yourself and receive understanding, your prayer was heard. The moment that we humble ourselves and receive the understanding that God has for us, the word of God has for us. The moment that we humble ourselves and receive this word, he will hear our prayer. Daniel had been praying for three weeks for God to reveal something to him. For three weeks he had prayed. Sometimes we pray for a day, and if it don't happen, we move on to some other thing. We don't. No, we need to stand on that prayer. If you've got a prayer in your heart, and your heart's aligned with God's heart, his heart's desires are going to be your heart's desires. When you pray, and when you seek him, and when you glorify him, watch what happens. Stand strong. Stand firm. Stand confident in that prayer. He prayed for three weeks. But the story tells what was happening in those three weeks. The messenger was coming and got tripped up a little bit, got waylaid by the enemy. So he called for help. And Michael, a chief angel in heaven, said, no, I'm going to help. And he come down and he helped. And he stayed there and he fought while the messenger came. And the messenger comes and he tells him this. I'm here to answer your prayer. Three weeks God answered his prayer. You might have been praying for a month. You might have been praying for a year. You might have been praying for two years. Don't stop. Don't stop. You stand strong. When it comes to your children, don't stop praying. When it comes to your parents, don't stop praying. When it comes to your family members, don't stop praying. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I'm praying for my family, and I don't give up, and I won't give up. I want to see things in my children that I haven't seen, but God already sees it. We have to know that and trust that. You remember a few weeks back we talked about Peter. Peter's in a dire straight position. He's, he's chained up with both hands, chained into prison. We talked about he had these four squads of, of guards on him. They were forward watching. When they would change shift, another four would watch him. Then another four. Then another four would watch him. They didn't want him to go anywhere. They were going to kill him. That was the goal. After the Passover, they were going to kill him. But he had a church. He had a people continually praying for him. And in their continual prayer, God heard that prayer. You think he don't hear your prayer. He hears your prayer. And he heard that prayer. He heard the cry of his people saying, God, we love Peter. God, do you know where he's at right now? It seems like there's no way. It seems like there's no way. But God, you have a way. You made a way. You've made a way. We've watched you. And they prayed continuously. Peter was freed. Matter of fact, the angel had to come and kick him to wake him up, get him out of there. He was free to the point he was knocking at the door. 
girl come to answer the door, hears his voice and runs to everyone and says, Peter's at the door. They didn't even believe their own prayer was coming true. Peter's at the door. They knock. Finally, they let him in and rejoiced with him. God answered Daniel's prayer. He heard him because he humbled himself. God answered their prayer because they prayed continuously with the right spirit and the right heart and the right mindset, not asking for things that we don't need, things that they don't need, but asking for the things that God needs for them or God wants for them, the heart of God. You remember when you were a baby and you cried and the bottle was brought to you? You remember, anybody remember that? Anybody remember being a baby? <laughs> Look at baby pictures. But you see babies now. There's some babies in the house today. When that baby cries, guess what? Everybody's at attention around that baby. Give it a bottle. Give it a pacifier. Give a son. Answer that baby's cry. And I remember this ministry when we first started. I was like, God, we need, there it was. God, will you, there it was. God, I, 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 there it was. He answered prayer before I could even get them out of my mouth. That's how he works with the babies. But this, this, this baby is five years old now. You ever carried a five-year-old on your hip? It gets heavy. My grandkids, they, they want to all climb on me, and it gets heavy. Twelve of them, almost. But when they're five years old, it's a little bit more weight. It's a little bit more to carry. It's a little bit, bit of a struggle to carry and keep that baby going. That's why we need everyone else around us to help us hold that baby up. So we can take a break for a minute. So here you go. We're, we're, we're going to take a break. And while you're holding the baby, it's like, man, they've been gone for a while. Then we just, when, you're, when the baby's growing up, it starts chewing on me. And I remember, I remember when we got ready to step into this building. I'm like, God's like, you're going to move to this new building. I'm like, all right, let me get this right. We're going to take the finances that we have over here in 3,800 square feet week to week. And we're going to take a building on this 16,000 square feet with that right there. I'm like, God, I don't even have the money to start. I don't even know where to even start. Are you sure that this is what you want us to do? Yeah, I'm sure. And I said, I don't know. I, I don't think I could sign the contract. And I said, well, what, how do you want me to do this? Some of you know this. Some of you might. But I love this story. And I'll keep telling it. How do you want me to do this? And he said, for the next four weeks, I don't want you to take offering. So here I'm thinking, he's saying, hey, we're going to do this big fundraiser. We're going to raise all this money, and we're just going to get you in a place that you can just walk into that building. No, he said this. This is where your faith comes in. This is where your trust comes in. He said, no, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want you to take an offering for the next four weeks. I'm like, all right, this is your baby. He said, I just want you to pray for the offering during the offering. So we did. For four weeks, we prayed during the offering. It was great. We had a great time of prayer. The fifth week, five, grace and favor. Shelly and I's favorite number. The fifth week, someone come down and they handed Shelly a check and they said, use this to get started with your ministry. You know, get started with your new place. And so she walks into church, and I'm like, thank you, because we've had money handed to us before to do stuff. And we're like, thank you. You know, we've had $1,000 given to us and, uh, you know, $5,000 and even $10,000 given to us and dollars and $2 and $3. It all is good in God's hand. He uses it. And so I walk into the church, and Shelly's in there, and she's crying. I'm like, well, what's wrong? Are you okay? She's like, she was shaking her head. I said, honey, what's wrong? Are you Okay. She just shake her head. And she held this piece of this check out. And I grabbed the check and immediately I fell to my knees. And I worshiped God. This young couple with young kids came 
to this city and wrote us a check. Because, they don't even go to this church. Wrote us a check because they believed in what God was doing. They wrote us a check for $50,000. That's how powerful your God is. That's a God that answers your prayer. But we have to do our part. We have a part in this. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will heal your land. You humble yourself, and you stand straight up, and you stand strong. He will touch your people. He will heal your family. He will heal tonight in the water. I believe it with everything in me. God's going to heal tonight in the water. We're not fighting a battle against each other. We're fighting a battle against the spiritual realm. When you pray, you pray in the spiritual realm. You don't pray in the human or in the natural. You pray in the spiritual realm because that's what God wants for you. You're going to get it from the spiritual side, not this other side of self-wants and self-things and self-desires. Listen, he's given you armor to help you with this stuff. And I love it. Elaine, I love it. Did anybody get a card this morning? These little cards, Elaine passed out. Everybody get one of these little cards? She passed these little cards out. And see, this is listening to God as well as praying to God and understanding, listening to him. She listened to God, and God said, I want you to bring this card. (laughs) And it's going to talk about the bell of truth. (laughs) It's going to talk about all the things that God gives you. To help you along this way, to help you pray, to help you understand all these things. And these are the things that he said. There's seven things, my friend David and I talked about this this week. It was good. There's six things, but David said there's seven things, really. The first thing is to bell the truth. Don't let the enemy lie to you about who you are and whose you are. You put that belt on, and you know what the truth is. The truth is in the Word of God. You put that belt on, you hold tight to that belt. Listen. And then the breastplate of righteousness. You are righteous because He is righteous. Claim that because the enemy is going to tell you that you're not. The enemy is going to tell you that you're worthless. You have no value at all. But no, you are righteous because He is righteous. Listen. To put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and shod your feet with peace. Everywhere you go, bring that peace everywhere you go. The gospel of Jesus Christ, take it everywhere you go. Watch what God will do with it. The shield of faith, I love this one. The shield of faith. I'm, I'm constantly in prayer for you all. And I've got that shield up. And when the enemy comes and said, you know, they said this. I'm like, no, they didn't. They did this. No, they didn't. You might have, but I'm like, no, they didn't. Because I know your hearts. Your hearts are not. And I'm blowing them darts away, and I'm just fighting against those darts. And I hope that you guys are doing that too, because you're here, and I'm right here fighting for you, believing for you, knowing who you are, knowing whose you are, because I see you as he sees you. And I want you guys to be the same way for Shelly and I. So you guys get in this little circle. Can I get you four guys right here? Get in a little circle. Shelly, I want you to come right here. Right here. You guys surround her with a circle, but you're facing out, and she's just wherever. Face outward. You guys, you guys face outward. All of you guys face outward. Listen, listen. Because I'm going to come behind you, and I'm going to smack you. Face outward. You can't protect me like that. You don't have my six like that. Come on. I wouldn't run with no cops that have my six like that. It's like, man, do you watch my back? We're going in to take this place down. This is how you protect the house. This is how you fight for the house. You have the shield up, and you fight for the house. Get those shields up. Get them up. Because the, the enemy's throwing darts at you. He's throwing darts. He's saying, they're no good. They're no good. No, you're not. He's telling you things that are lies. He's telling you things that are not true about your leaders. He's telling you things that are not true. Don't believe him. Fight it off. Fight it off. He's telling you things about you that's not true. Don't believe it. Fight it off. You guys just sit down. Thank you. But I want you to know that's how we fight for one another. We surround one another. We protect one another. We're family. That's what we do. That's what we do. This is the house of the Lord. We'll protect this. The hell and the salvation. 
I believe some of you need to get in the water tonight, and this is why. To put on that helmet of salvation, to renew your mind to the things of Christ. To renew your mind, a new mindset that's of him and not of this world. Renew your mind to the things of God. Put on that helmet of salvation, that re rebooting, rethinking the way everything is structured and knowing that heaven has his best for you. The sword of the spirit, the word of God, slaying every stinking giant that gets in your way. Listen, you can slay every giant with the word of God. You don't have to bad mouth anybody. You give them the word of God. That's what it's going to take. You don't have to tear them down with your words. Give them the word of God. If they say that they're a Christian, listen, this is dad's book right here. If they say that they're a Christian, they have to follow this, and you have to tell them what it says. If they're a child that's walked away, you don't know. You say that you're, you and my dad's the same dad. Brother, you better follow this right here because this is the word of God. This is the word of our father, and this is what he says to do. You can slay so many giants. Listen, it's so good. You guys are awesome. But the seventh thing is, this is in Ephesians. The seventh thing is, is to pray. Is to pray. To pray in the Spirit, actually. To pray. These are the things that God has given you to defeat the enemy. All these things, knowing the truth, all the way down to prayer. These are the things that God has given you. Know that he hears your prayer when you humble yourself and you line up to what he says. Listen. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 40. You might get out of here early. Maybe not. Isaiah 40, 30. And I want you to know that there are going to be times that you might fall. Okay, listen. I understand that. But the key to that is getting back up. When you fall, the key to that is getting back up without shame, without condemnation, without anything on you from the world. The key is getting back up and standing strong and standing in attention when Jesus walks in the room. Jesus said that he's an advocate for us. If we fall, if we mess up, if we sin, not that we do, but if we do, he's there to help us get back up. He's there to help us walk the walk, get back on track, not take anything on that's not for you. It says, though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, listen, Those who wait, those who rest, those who have hope in, those who trust in the Lord, those who stay put, those who stick around. Stick around long enough to see what God's doing. Don't judge and walk away. Stick around long enough to see what he's doing. The problem might be you and not who you think it is. Deal with that first. Then come back with a different mindset. Those who rest in the Lord, wait upon the Lord, will gain new strength. They will exchange their strength or they will exchange their weakness for his strength. And you'll give him your weakness, and he will give you the strength that you need to persevere. So those who wait on the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings. Listen. These are not just any wings, okay? These are the kind of wings that take you up high with just a little blow of the wind, and you can soar as high as you need to soar, and you can come down as low as you need to go effortlessly. Without effort. Just a little breeze. You're up here. Woo! I love it. These are called pinions. These are the feathers that give you flight. You can cut these feathers and be 
bound to the ground. You can cut these feathers off any bird and they can't fly. These are your flight feathers. These are the ones that God's talking about right here. This is the wing that he's talking about that he's going to give you. That you would soar without effort. No power needed. Because there's times we need to go, we need to soar high and get away from the darts of the enemy. And then we come back and minister in the valley. Then we go back up. Then we come back down and minister. Watching his moves, watching what he does. Listen, so you're going to mount up with new wings, wings like eagles. And they will run and they will charge. They will charge and not get tired. I get tired. I want this. I want to be able to run and not go weary and not get tired. I want to be able to walk by faith in everything that I do. Those who wait upon the Lord will gain new strength and they will mount up with wings like eagles and they will run and not get tired and they will walk and not grow weary. Let's stand. <laughs> when you're done, you're done. When he's done. I love you, Lord. Sing it out. And I live my Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone in the house today that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? If you don't know him, come forward. 
Come and get to know this Jesus. He's so valuable. If you're struggling, he hears your cry. He knows your heart. Before you even ask, he knows. I want to bless you guys this morning. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your people. I bless you for them. I bless you, Lord, for them. Because they are amazing. Their prayers are heard. Their cry is heard. And help is on the way, Father. I thank you for that. Lord, it might be a week. It might be two, three, four. It might have been a year already that they've prayed the same prayer. But God, let them be persistent and pray. Continue to stand firm on your word. That they would glorify you. They would humble themselves. And they would seek your face. That their land would be healed. God, you know. Jesus.